Hey everyone, this is Jace, and welcome to my guide for the Tower of Cetra Floor B70 against the Problem of Behemoth. Uh, this gear overview is pre-recorded, so I'm just going to walk you through the general philosophy of my team instead of going through every single piece of equipment. If you need to see something, just feel free to pause the video. So I'm running a team of Barret, Tifa, and Aerith. Barret is absolutely required for this fight because he's the only person in the game for now who can raise your team's physical defense at the rate that you need to in this fight. The Primal Behemoth is going to be constantly reducing your party's physical defense and Barret's Assault Gun is the only weapon that can basically counteract that in a timely manner. I have it at just over boost 0, you don't need it at over boost 6, that's completely fine. I'm running his Heavy Hauser because the Primal Behemoth also has a very fast Circle Sigil break and Heavy Hauser can break extra Circle Sigils. One thing I want to point out with Barrett's uh, sub-weapons is that I'm running uh, Yuffie's four-point shuriken and her arctic star, and that brings Barrett up to level three of buff debuff extension, and that's going to make a huge difference both for his physical defense buffs for the team, but also for the uh, defense debuffs he's going to be putting on the boss with his limit break, Mind Blow, which I'm running at max level. For Tifa, she's going to be my main DPS. You might have noticed already that she just has an overboost one motor drive, and that's going to be her primary source of damage. You do not need an OB6 wind weapon to make this happen. OB1 is just fine, but you just need to be able to boost your damage in some way. The way I'm adding a lot of damage to uh, Tifa is via her sub weapons, so Killer Hornet and Mad Minute and Overboost 6, and then I have Dark Heavens and Overboost 2 just for more physical attack and more wind potency. Uh, all the materia on her are just stat sticks. The Power Soul that I have in her secondary slot is just, it was just what gave her the best physical attack and enough HP to survive. Uh, for Aerith, I'm running basically my standard healing setup for her. Free outfit, uh, chocobo staff in the main hand, overboost one fairy tale in the offhand, but I'm also gearing Aerith as a little bit of a damage dealer as well. I have level 5 Mega Flare, so I guess I should probably make a Bahama EX2 guide at some point. Uh, a single target Kira for healing, a circle Ruin Ruff for the sigil phase, and then an Aurora, because she's going to be doing some damage at some point. You might have noticed that Barret also had an uh, Aurora Blow. Uh, I'm running Sun Umbrella as one of her sub-weapons, Buster Sword as another for HP, but also some extra damage, and then Glenn's Hardcore Squad is the best healing sub-weapon I have at the moment. I still need to work on Aerith's um, Guard Stick to replace that. Uh, feel free to take a look at Aerith's stats and R abilities if you'd like to. Alright, so we're going to be going straight into the fight. Uh, this is a very, very scripted fight. You can understand every single thing that the Primal Behemoth is going to do he does it in the same order every single time. He's going to open the fight with two AoE attacks, Head Thrash and Spin Attack. Head Thrash reduces your party's physical defense by two tiers. Spin Attack reduces it by one tier. Head Thrash doesn't deal a ton of damage, but Spin Attack deals a little bit more, so I always swap to Defensive Stance for that. We're going to be counteracting the physical defense down using Barret's Agitation ability from the Assault Gun. Here I just held some ATB on him so I can make sure to get the buff up to three tiers and make sure the buff is going to last as long as possible into the fight. This first part of the fight, the main thing you want to focus on is just surviving because he's going to heal back all the damage you deal to him anyway. He's going to use Head Thrash and Spin Attack and then he's going to follow it up with two swipes and then a heavy heave against one of your party members. He does that pretty regularly throughout the fight. He'll do his two AoE attacks and then he'll do swipe, swipe, and then a heavy heave. For the Heavy Heave, I always swap to Defensive Stance because it actually hits quite hard. After he does the Heavy Heave, he's going to get tired for a little bit, he'll chill, and then he'll do two single target swipes, then he'll chill, then two more single target swipes. Since I've covered what he's going to do for the next few seconds, I just want to walk through how I'm going to be approaching this fight. It's a DPS check as soon as he uses Stamina Charge. So basically for Tifa, all I'm going to be doing is making sure that any time that she uses her main damage ability for Motor Drive, the attack gauge is full, so we're maximizing damage as much as we possibly can. Aerith is actually going to be locked into healing for the majority of the fight, except for a couple of occasions where she's going to be able to contribute to DPS via that Aurora that I have equipped on her. Bear is also going to be locked into raising the party's physical defense for the majority of the fight, again with some exceptions for Citadel Breaking and just a tiny bit of DPS that he'll be able to sneak in here and there. Here's another set of AoE attacks followed by two swipes and a heavy heave. We'll swap to Defensive Stance for the Heavy Heave. But now, basically, the real fight is going to start. I'm going to swap over to Tifa to make sure she holds ATB and doesn't use uh, Sonic Spiral. Stamina Charge is going to heal back all the damage the Primal Behemoth has taken, and now we're on a timer. 
Between now and the end of the fight, we need to deal as much damage as we can, because the Primal Behemoth is going to end the fight with uh, just a one-hit kill for your entire party if you can't kill him fast enough. Once he uses Rampage, he boosts his physical attack and reduces his defense, and this is where we really want to start ramping up our damage. So you notice that I saved some ATB on Tifa to be able to use her main damaging abilities there. When he uses Rampage, he's going to use two sets of his AoE attacks, lowering your party's physical defense by six tiers total. So you just want to be ready for that. Uh, I'm For this Body Slam, I'm going to be raising Barret's, uh, or using Barret's Agitation ability to raise the party's physical defense by two tiers. That's going to be enough for us to survive. I'm going to sit on Barret to make sure that he doesn't use any other abilities, because immediately after Body Slam, the boss is going to go into a very fast Sigil phase. Uh, but I'm going to delay this by using Tifa Somersault 1 to get debuffs on the boss so we can maximize our damage, but also to give our party a little bit more time to build ATB for the Sigil phase. And you'll see how fast it is in just a moment. Very, very fast. Uh, so Tifa is only going to be using uh, Sonic Spiral. I didn't equip anything that will allow her to break extra Sigils, and that's going to force her to keep doing damage. Whenever we break uh, his Sigil phase, uh, I'm going to make sure Tifa does... Sonic Spiral with max ATB, that Aerith heals once, and that Barret applies Agitation once. After the Sigil phase, he's going to do two sets of AoE attacks, followed by two swipes and the Heave. We're going to address that the same way that we were before he started Rampaging. We're going to go into Defensive Stance for the Heavy Heave, use that as an opportunity to heal, and we're going to be, in some cases, even holding ATB pass when Tifa hits the cap, because it's actually, on my team, worth it to wait for the attack gauge, even if Tifa is capped on ATB. After these two spin attacks, he's going to go into another body slam, but we're going to delay that using Mind Blow and Mega Flare. Barret's Mind Flow debuffs are going to be up for quite a while. Same deal throughout the rest of the fight, just trying to make sure that Tifa is using Sonic Spiral only when the attack gauge is max. We're going to heal up a little bit here, and we're going to get to three tiers of physical defense up. Tifa's HP is a little bit low, so we're going to use a single target Kira to get her heal back up, and then I'm going to swap to Barret to make sure he doesn't use Aurora Blow or something stupid, because he's done that several times, costing me the fight. We just barely survive here. I'm going to swap over to Barret. And we're going to go ahead and break the Sigil phase. Same idea, I'm going to swap to Tifa just to make sure she's not staying capped on ATB throughout this. One heal with Aerith, and one agitation from Barret. Aerith is going to heal one more time, but we're actually at the tail end of the fight. That happened very quickly. We're going to try and push as much damage while all four of his debuffs are up. That's the last heal that we're going to do from Aerith. Everybody's going to be doing nothing but doing damage now. The boss is going to do swipe, swipe, heave, swipe, swipe, heave. He totally jukes me here. I have no idea why he waited, but I thought he just wasn't going to do the heave, so I swapped back to attack stance and paid for it. But again, no more healing. He's going to do another set of swipe, swipe, heave here, like I just mentioned, but we're trying to focus on as much damage as possible. Barret's debuffs are just now starting to fall off, and you might notice that Tifa's somersault is back up. We're not going to apply it immediately. We're going to wait until he starts to go into body slam, and we're going to delay this body slam. The reason we want to do that is because we're going to create a tiny damage window where we have all four debuffs up again, and we're going to spend all of our characters' ATB as quickly as we can. I'm just furiously jumping between characters using whatever they have up, because when he starts this body slam, he's going to remove his own physical and magical defense down debuffs, and so we just wanted to get that damage through. This body slam kills your party, so this is the arranged timer basically, so you want to do all the damage you possibly can. With my party, we're just able to eke out the win. And that's the fight. So if you found the video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe for future videos and guides. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Also, AppleBot, stop designing fights like this where you need one weapon from one character. This is absurd.